All you need is an old phone charger, and you'll have the best digital antenna. As you can see, my TV isn't picking up any channels. I don't have cable or a satellite dish. With an old phone charger, you can receive all available channels without any problem. Here's how to do it. First, grab an old phone charger. Use scissors to cut off the plug end. You won't need it anymore. Then strip the outer insulation of the cable just like I'm showing. Inside, you'll find a few wires. Strip their ends to expose the copper strands. Now you'll need a coaxial antenna cable. Remove the white coating to reveal the copper core. Now connect the charger part. Attach one of the wires to the copper core and the other one to the braided shield. After joining both parts, wrap everything tightly with electrical tape, then attach the antenna connector. Put it on the other end of the cable and screw it on firmly. Finally, plug the coax connector into the antenna input of your TV and check the channels. As you can see, the signal comes in perfectly. Let me tell you why I keep stones in a bottle. For this trick, all you need is a plastic bottle and some stones. Make an opening in the center of the bottle, draw a medium-sized rectangle with a marker, then cut it out with scissors or a knife. Next, create a smaller hole at the back of the bottle. Heat a burner and carefully press it to the bottle to make the hole. Now, put some stones inside through the cutout opening, but don't overfill it to prevent them from falling out. Most people don't know that this can give them faster internet for free. The smaller hole allows you to hang the bottle higher in the house, where the signal is often stronger. This trick is perfect for people living in rural areas or on the outskirts of town where the signal may be weaker. To enhance the effect, you can place your phone in the bottle when sharing its internet. The basalt and granite in the stones help improve the signal. These electric devices use power even when turned off. That's why your electricity bills keep rising. Some devices, as long as they're plugged in, consume electricity. Check if you have these in your home. Many people think it's harmless, but the truth is, plenty of appliances use energy even when they're off. Take a dishwasher, for example. Look, it's always lit up. Ovens display the time continuously, consuming energy. While these may only cost a few dollars over a few months, over the course of a year, it can add up to tens of dollars. Printers, too, consume electricity in standby mode, even when not in use. And don't forget charging cables left plugged in. They draw power even if nothing is charging. Avoid using extension cords without an on-off switch, as devices plugged into them constantly draw power. The same goes for induction stoves. Even in standby mode, the red light indicating it's locked but ready to use consumes electricity. Not all devices can be unplugged when not in use, but the best solution is to connect appliances to a power strip with a switch. Turning off the strip ensures no energy is being drawn, saving you money in the long run. Insert a regular straw into your phone. That's what they do in electronic stores. This simple trick will improve the performance of an old phone. First, prepare a regular plastic bottle from a beverage. Use a knife to cut off its top along with the cap. It should look like in the video. Now it's time to prepare the cap. You need to make a hole in it. The most convenient way is to unscrew it from the bottle. Use a lighter to gently melt its cap. It's important that the flame does not touch the cap because it can catch fire. When the plastic starts to melt, simply pierce it with a metal screwdriver. It should go all the way through, creating a hole. It should be the same diameter as a drinking straw. Insert it through the hole so that it protrudes on both sides. Then secure it with hot glue. Apply glue all around so that the straw doesn't move. Wait for the hot glue to dry. This prepared tip fits any household vacuum cleaner. You just need to remove the manufacturer's attachments from its hose and attach the one made from the bottle and straw. It's so precise that it's perfect for cleaning electronics like phones. That's where a lot of dust accumulates. The charging port may work slower if there is too much sand and dust in it. Such a tip allows us to clean it in the comfort of our home. Just insert the straw into the phone and turn on the vacuum cleaner. 
the dust that has accumulated there for weeks will be immediately sucked out. The same can be done with headphone jacks and speakers. These electric devices use power even when turned off. That's why your electricity bills keep rising. Some devices, as long as they're plugged in, consume electricity. Check if you have these in your home. Many people think it's harmless, but the truth is, plenty of appliances use energy even when they're off. Take a dishwasher, for example. Look, it's always lit up. Ovens display the time continuously, consuming energy. While these may only cost a few dollars over a few months, over the course of a year, it can add up to tens of dollars. Printers, too, consume electricity in standby mode, even when not in use. And don't forget charging cables left plugged in. They draw power even if nothing is charging. Avoid using extension cords without an on-off switch, as devices plugged into them constantly draw power. The same goes for induction stoves. Even in standby mode, the red light indicating it's locked but ready to use consumes electricity. Not all devices can be unplugged when not in use, but the best solution is to connect appliances to a power strip with a switch. Turning off the strip ensures no energy is being drawn, saving you money in the long run. A former employee has revealed the dark secrets of an electronics store. If a product code ends with the number six, don't buy it. We'll show you a few valuable tricks to avoid bad purchases. Have you ever noticed salespeople recommending completely different products when you're clearly interested in something else? Why does this happen? The earnings of these salespeople, or so-called customer advisors, are largely commission-based. And when commissions are involved, quantity often matters more than quality. They usually recommend what benefits them, not you. Here's a breakdown of some tricks used by salespeople in stores to help you avoid making poor decisions. Stores use something called a code system. This code indicates how much commission the salesperson will earn when you buy a particular product. The code can be found on every product's label, usually in the upper right corner. It consists of a string of numbers, but the last two are the most important. These numbers determine the commission multiplier for the salesperson. Products are rated on a scale from 1 to 6, where 1 represents the lowest commission and 6 represents the highest. A product with the number 6 is often clearance stock, a display model, or even defective. In some stores, this information is also on the product's label, but in a different spot. The number is located inside a square. A filled square with the number 1 means the salesperson gets the highest commission. An empty square with the number one means a lower commission. Products marked with numbers two or three are often outdated or damaged, but yield the highest commissions for salespeople. Remember, don't blame the salespeople for this. They're not at fault. The real issue lies with the sales system used in these types of stores.